zip. Today we're looking at this hidden camera. It looks like a smoke detector. The camera is right here. And this is a real smoke detector for size comparison. The funny thing is, the hidden camera, the smoke detector, has no wordings, no letters whatsoever. The thickness is about the same. And the diameter is a little bit smaller. In the back, you can pop it out and use the included battery. It will last for about 3 or 4 hours. You can always wire AC power directly into here. There was a cover right here, and you can easily pop it out and insert your micro SD card in. That's how all of the video files are stored. The micro SD card is not included, by the way, but it will take up to 256 gigabytes. This is the USB C port, which can power the whole unit, and that's what we'll be using right now for convenience. I'm just going to plug it into this power brick. This power brick will last the whole day. As soon as it gets power, the LED will start blinking, letting you know that everything is good and ready to go. It will take maybe about 30 seconds for it to go away. Strangely enough, this camera does not have a microphone, and that's a shame. If you absolutely need to hear something, get the hidden camera with the outlet as seen in a previous video. And from the last video, I show you how to find hidden cameras. For this smoke detector, if it's running on battery, then it's virtually impossible to find it. There's no way. But if the hidden camera is plugged in for power, then you can easily spot it as seen here. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Once you mount the holder into position, insert the hidden camera into it, and then twist it to lock it into position. Here you can see the hole is made only for the AC cord. So if you're using USB-C like I am, you have to drill a hole right here for the USB-C cord to feed through. There's two positions that you can mount this camera via the wall, as seen here, or onto the ceiling. The reason being is that the camera is mounted at 45 degree angle, as you can see here. And one of the really nice thing about this hidden camera is that when you're using the app, you can rotate it as needed. I tested this feature, and surprisingly, the motor is very quiet. So you can easily pan around the room without attracting a lot of attention. Now, to control the camera, first you need this app. It's called CamDuct. Go ahead and open it up and allow it location. The location is needed in order to add this camera. On the upper right hand corner, click on the plus icon. Click on Remote Monitor Setting because I'm going to allow it to view anywhere in the world. Click on the smoke detector. Enter in your Wi Fi credentials. Click on OK. Be sure to check this box right here. And then click on if blue lights flash on until off. Check the box again and click on to connect the camera to Wi Fi. Now go to your Wi Fi setting and connect directly to the camera's Wi Fi. Entering the password of the camera, which is CamDoc66, and then click on connect. Now let's go back to the CamDoc app again. It's going to try to connect to the CamDuck's Wi-Fi and then ultimately connect to your own Wi-Fi. Click on Setting to change some of the settings. For instance, you can change the camera name. If you click on the Play button, then you'll be able to see the live stream of it. Right now, I'm holding it in my hand, so it's kind of shaky. The default 1080p resolution is very low. Click on the 4 megapixel to see it even clearer. Down the bottom, you can see the PTZ, which is Pan Tilt Zoom. There's no tilt or zoom, so if you want to pan around, click on it, and then you can move left or right. Very interesting. Clicking on the SD file will let you see all of the recordings on the SD card. The files are divided into 10 minutes segment. So if you turn it on for 5 minutes and you shut the camera off within 5 minutes, then there is no files whatsoever in the SD card. You have to leave it on for at least 11 minutes to view that past 10 minutes. Here I'm playing around with the menu for you to see. 
Sadly, there is no RTSP or RMVF. That's a shame because there's no way for you to add this camera into your own existing network video recorder whatsoever. You can change the recordings to loop continuously or record only when there's motion. Whenever there's such an option, I always choose loop recording. You can always view previous events on your phone or you can always pop the micro SD card out and then insert it into your own computer to view it. Here I'm viewing directly using VLC on my computer to give you a taste of what the quality is like using this camera. Obviously it's not the best money you can buy because this is a hidden camera after all. It's so tiny and discreet. Alright, hopefully this video helps you on how to set up this whole hidden camera up. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.